Hi everyone, and we are so grateful to bring you another brand new Beaver Splendid episode. This is Pastor Chris Young. And this is Pastor Natalie. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. Amen. We're so grateful for those of you. More and more, we're grateful you guys are liking the page, you're sharing it, you're commenting, which is such a tremendous blessing. Thank you so very much. And you know, for so many projects that were upcoming, you guys have seen on our social media what we're involved in. We're so grateful you guys uh, for your comments. We just so appreciate all of that so very much. Yes. Today's episode, we're going to go right into the things of God and the Word of God in 1 Kings chapter 17. Today's Be Resplendent episode is entitled, When You Are Led in a Different Direction. Mm-hmm. Be led in a different direction. Mm-hmm. Now we're throwing you off a little bit, and you're going to find out through the mm-hmm. Word of God. Yes, amen. First Kings chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Wow. Mm. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, Mm -hmm. because there had been no rain in the land. Now verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please, bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, Mm -hmm. he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Mm -hmm. So he said, so she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Mm -hmm. Wow, her last meal she was preparing. Verse 13. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Being led in a different Different direction. direction. Yes. Wow. Yes. He had an assignment. Yes, he did. To to go, as you know, the the first couple of verses in verse 17, to, to, in to go 17, in, in chapter one. 17 verse 1 yeah. to, to go right and 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 just to, you know they tell him to get away and go to the east and go by the brook Cherith which flows but as he was doing that and he was 
going to go back because if you go ahead and you read in, you know, verses 6, chapter 16 and everything, you'll see that, you know, Elijah was on a bit of an assignment of, 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 yeah. of dealing with some tough situations and in the middle of it. And particularly like regarding the king of the, of the place at that, la- at that time. Correct. But, you know, because God was trying to deal with the people at mm-hmm. that time, um, God was also showing Elijah that there would be no rain. And that was something to show the people that there is only one God. Absolutely. And that at, at the word of the Lord, um, this is what was going to take place. So, you know, we read how Elijah was very obedient to God and obedient to the fact yes. that once he gave that word, he also then was told, like you said, to go to the brook. So that was part of his assignment, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I I find it amazing because if it's not raining, of course, over the, the, uh, over the course of time, things that, are going to dry up. Things will dry up. So the very brook where God led Elijah dried up. And because it dried up, we see that, you know, that time of being by the brook was up. And, you know, it's important that we recognize in obeying God when something, you know, that time is up, you know, and, and you know, obeying God and what's next and things like that. So as he was being led by God yes. and that brook was being dried up at that point, you know, he perhaps was prepared at the word of the Lord to go back now to this king because you know what he said he said it will it wouldn't rain again until God's word would again be spoken absolutely that it's going to be raining again yes. so obviously when the brook dried up Elijah in his heart and mind and obedience was thinking okay now it's time for me to go back and face the king and speak the word of the Lord now again but it's a it's amazing how God told Elijah about this widow. And I know we could look at that and think that that was all for Elijah's sake, but that was so much for Elijah and the widow. Yes. And the son. Yes, correct. You know? Could be another, uh, you know, an, a miracle happens, and, and if you really give God all the glory and, and you really, really remember what the Lord has done and it impacts on you instantaneously that you begin to walk it out in your life but not just reflect only on what is in the past but it lets you change you what you have heard like you're hearing this episode today Correct. let it transform you and you begin to walk it out Correct. on a daily day basis yes. it will transform the next generation yes. if you choose to walk it out yeah and you know the the thing about it is that the the widow she was ready to die correct so she was preparing her last meal But, you know, between her and God, God spoke to that widow already. God was already preparing that widow that there would be a miracle. So although, see, there are times we're praying about something, and although it looks like there's no hope, Mm -hmm. and you know that there's that midnight hour, that midnight cry, that midnight hour, it seems that it's just at that moment where it seems like it's just about, that's it. Where's the answer? But you're still going to believe God. Well, that's where this widow was. Yes. And she was going to obey God to the end. And it was it was amazing that here's this, this man of God that comes. And he says to her, give me something to eat first. Take care of me first. That was an act of obedience on her Correct. part. Would she, would she give the little that she had going in another direction? Yes. Just as now he was being led in another direction. It was a sidebar. He was going to be used by God in this way for this widow because God loved this widow so much. And he wanted to provide for her in a miraculous way. And God cares and loves so many of you so very much. His love for you is that he wants you to receive this word today and be transformed in your faith. Yes, and to the point that if you're the one that's symbolic of how this widow was, where you feel like, you know what, hopeless, like you feel that although you've been praying, there really hasn't been the answer that you thought yet, Mm -hmm. the the provision that you thought yet, um, 
just know that God has heard your cry. Just know that God is yeah. so aware of where you are That's and right. what you're facing. And just as much as he loved this widow, this is why I believe this is in the Bible for us to be encouraged of how much he loves us. Even though we feel insignificant and we may feel like, you know what, I see God doing it for this one or that one. And, and yet I, I, I'm get, it's getting worse and, and worse for me. They may even think, but, 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 but I don't have much. He may, you may think that's so insignificant. He, you may even see, but that's all I have. Look about this widow. All she had was just a little oil. Yes. A little bit of flour. Yes. But yes. her faithfulness, and what I realized just now as you were saying and, yes. and breaking it down for the folks here that are watching this, is that it was almost like a sim symbolism of giving God first. Yes. You had something all planned out. Yeah. You were going to get some sticks together. You got a little flour. Yeah. You got a little bit of oil. Put a little bit of water. You're going to have your last meal. You know, then you won't be able to afford it. And then she, her and her son were going to die. Because, you know, that's what happens. If you don't have anything to eat, that's what happens, unfortunately. And when we think about it, and by the way, that's one of the reasons why we do so many times those feeding, you know, hunger projects every single year of resplendency. That just made me think. That's that just triggers something Amen. inside of me. And I'm so grateful yes. that we do that. Yes. But, you know, to God be the glory. But in regarding to this, if this woman, when she, because she had a little something and she had it all planned out, but here comes God in the midst of it and says, okay, yes. you had this all planned out. Now, allow me to introduce to you a man of God or something. And it, she literally put her plan to the side and gave to him first. Yes. It's symbolism. I said, Lord, I'm going to give to you first. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Did not expect to say that. And you know what? I believe that God sees when what we have, we're willing to lay that down to God and give him first. You mean even if you have something all planned out and being led in a different direction shows, than what you thought? It shows God that he really is first place in your life. Because ultimately, that's what he wants in relationship with God, in fellowship with God, mm. in walking with God as a believer. Yes. You have this place where God, I believe he, he's, he tests that part of us where he wants to see, do I have first place in your life? Yeah. Do I have your all in all? And mm. when you get to that place where you feel like you don't have nothing left, and then he says, give me even that little bit you have. And you feel like even that you're requiring of me. And he says, yes, because when you obey him, even to that extent, you see, even from the story, he said, you will have all that you need and all that you want. They had constantly from that moment on because of her obedience they had more than enough. Okay, I sense the Holy Spirit in Amen. such a strong way here that I'm going to ask you to pray because yes. there's many people out there that you guys have already have your own. Oh, I got my I got my list. Mm -hmm. I have my thing that mm -hmm. I'm going to do. I know wow. I'm in a tough situation. I have a little two by nothing, wow. and God is and God is saying, you know what? Will you open up to me yeah. to be led? by the Holy Spirit yes. because now we understand you know yes I just read the word and by the way you have to keep reading the word that's how you get to know the will of the perfect will of God and and I'm being honest with you that's just one of the ways but you have to and rely Spirit. on the Holy yes. Spirit everything Hallelujah. is based on the Holy Spirit yes. you have to you know of course based on the 100% on the word of God but I'm saying but your life when you know Jesus no longer he's not here in the physical you know on earth he's not walking anymore he was crucified he died on the cross and he rose from dead. He said he sent the Holy Spirit. And I want you guys to think of it. Oh, it's that Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit be someone that you communicate with. It is someone who you have a great intimacy, your personal, your, your, your Lord and Savior. See, Holy Spirit. Yes. It's not even just the Holy Spirit. His name is Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It gets to know Holy Spirit. And say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Yes. And would you pray for them? I feel like there's so many of you that have your plans all set up on what you want. Mm -hmm. My health, my this, this is what. And God is saying, would you allow the Holy Spirit to get you out of your comfort zone to be led in a different situation? Because I'm telling you, God always wants to get us out of our comfort zones. Sometimes personally, I'm like, 
Lord, come on, give me a break <laughs> because it's so hard. But it's like, but I'm comfortable right now. I'm good with this mm. cup of water. And God is saying, but oh, but I want to give you more. Maybe he wants to give you a jug. I don't know. But would you pray in the oh, name yeah, of yeah. Jesus Christ? Yeah. Father, we thank you right now for every person that is watching and listening. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that they're being filled. Even now, they're not just being touched, but they're giving you permission right now. They're asking you to come and fill me with your Holy Spirit, your very presence, fill them, Lord. Lord Jesus. Father God, we ask, oh God, them, that Lord. as they ask you of this, yeah. that they ask you also to forgive them. They ask you, Lord, to help them. They allow you permission to have your way. And that, Father God, where they've had their own will or their own agenda or their own list, as Pastor Chris has said, they're laying it down. And they're surrendering all of that to you. And they're willing to lay everything down like this widow. And God, it's not because it's easy. Because this was not easy for this widow. Jesus. But God, when you're asking this of Jesus. us, it's because there's something more and miraculous that yes, you want to do on our behalf. And we want that, Lord. And so, God, I pray that faith will arise, will arise right now, yes. wherever these individuals are listening. And that, Father God, they'll be encouraged, but they'll also the be challenged to believe you for more. Yes, and that Lord. they just won't settle, but they will believe yes. you for more. And they'll be willing to be led in a different direction yes, Lord. by the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. And so, God, I thank you that you encourage them, you surround them, and you fill them up now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we Jesus. pray. Amen and amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen. Continue to be open to the Holy Spirit. Yes. He will lead you in blessings. He will lead you to the toughest of times. You know, when you He'll first lead become... You right through those it, times. Read you right. When people say, oh, become, I'm now a Christian. Oh, things are going to be. Guess what? Now you have a safeguard that through the thickest and the toughest of times, you have someone who will shelter you under the shadow of his wings. Yes. Will you go through it? Yes, you'll go through it. But you will have a peace that passes all understanding that you can't understand. Saying, wow, last year before I was a Christian, before yes. I became higher in my faith yes. right now, I would be like oh, literally pulling out my hair and I would be acting crazy and I would be saying negative things. But this year, for some reason, where I am in my faith, I'm trusting Jesus. Yes, that situation is horrific. Yes, it's not good. Yes, I need this. Yes, but God, I trust you. Yes. I trust you, yes. Lord. I trust you. Yes. Would you trust the Lord with us today yes. in the name of Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes. And that's why we're doing this episode. Yeah. yeah. Be and, led. And, and you know what? Also, so it's just like how that prophet came and gave that word to that woman. You know what? It's, it's as if right now God is using us for the glory of his name yes. to give you this word of hope and encouragement. That's right. So be encouraged today as That's you're right. listening and as we prayed for you. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear how God turned these things around for you. We want to hear yes. um, how this word, yes. what it has done in you and in your innermost being. That's right. And, and let us know the miracles that God is doing in your life. We're thankful for every person that, that not only has been listening right. and watching, but they've been sharing some, you know, like really crazy, miraculous things that God is doing. So we want to thank you all That's for right. staying tuned and watching all of be responding yes. episodes. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please know that there's a Respondency app. There's Facebook. There's so many different social media that we would love for you to be a part of so you can get all the updates of what we're doing. That, you know, like I just made a little blurb about our various hunger projects and different things that we're going about. We love to do that because we love to bless people. Would you guys join us and within prayer and just, just be encouraged. Each time there's an episode, you will get a notification. That's all it is. There's a good word that gets every Thursday on the Respondency app that someone just saw me on Friday says, you know what? I received that word on, <laughs> on, on, on Thursday. It was such a good thing. I Amen. needed to hear that. It was such an encouragement. Amen. And also, Pastor Natalie has various ways of being for to encourage you also. Yeah. Thank you guys for following me at Examine Moments That's and right. reading my blogs on Let's Take a Moment.com. And as you're led in a different direction, as you open yourself up to the Holy Spirit, we want you to do one last thing. Stand, Stand out, out and shine, shine for Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We love you.